Good morning, everybody, and um, thank you, Alzheimer Europe, for the opportunity to speak to you today about sight loss and dementia. Um, whilst I'm based within the Alzheimer's Society, I'm speaking this morning um, on behalf of the Dementia and Sight Loss Interest Group, um, which has come together to, to raise awareness of uh, the concurrence of these two issues, uh, which comprises the Royal National Institute of the Blind, the RNIB, the Thomas Pocklington Trust, and the Alzheimer's Society. And um, apologies for my, um, my co-presenter, Sarah Buchanan, who could not be with us today. First of all, I just wanted to tell you something about the scale of the issue. Um, and <clears throat> whilst you might be familiar with some of the statistics um, on dementia, so in the UK we have 750,000 people uh, with dementia, a figure uh, that's uh, forecast to rise to 1.7 million by 2051. And of course, uh, we know that it's more common as people age, one in five of the over 80s uh, will have a form of dementia. And then with sight loss, um, some two million people self-define as having a sight problem or difficulty seeing. Of these, 1.7 million are aged over 65. Recently, another charity called Sense that focuses on deaf-blind people have highlighted some 356,000 people with, uh, who are uh, defined as self-blind. This is an issue we haven't looked at yet. And then th this goes up to one in three people over 90 with significant visual impairment. And the interest group's estimate of the numbers of people with both conditions, we estimate that uh, just over 2% of the over 75s in the UK will have both dementia and sight loss. And you can see that's a significant number. It's 100,000 people. Um, turning now to the causes of, uh, of sight loss, and this is about sight loss caused by dementia. Currently, uh, most is known about damage to the visual system in Alzheimer's disease. The plaque and tangle damage which characterizes Alzheimer's disease initially accumulates in the brain areas linked to memory for processing new factual information. It lies close to the part of the visual pathway which can also become affected by the spread of plaques and tangles. There can also be additional visual perceptual difficulties in dementia related to Parkinson's disease and Lewy body dementia, and in the latter, hallucinations are common. In vascular dementia, if strokes occur along or near the visual pathway, a wide range of visual perceptual difficulties can result. And uh, importantly, changes in vision from strokes sometimes may not be noticed by an individual. Posterior cortical atrophy, uh, PCA, is a progressive degenerative condition where damage to brain cells is particularly focused at the back of the brain, the region responsible for visual processing. And that is the particular rare form of Alzheimer's that Terry Pratchett has. Now turning to sight loss caused by eye conditions, and there are a number of key conditions here, including macular degeneration, cataracts, glaucoma, retinitis pigmentosa, uh, a genetic condition, and diabetic retinopathy. And I'm just going to show you some of the effects of these conditions uh, briefly. So here we have what you might call normal vision. Then uh, age-related uh, macular degeneration, the most common cause of, of sight loss, where you have the loss of central vision. Glaucoma, where uh, there are blank areas of vision and tunnel vision is, uh, is common. Cataracts, where there is blurred or cloudy vision made worse by glare. <clears throat> And lastly, diabetic retinopathy, the uh, loss of areas of vision that may lead to total uh, loss of blindness. I've not got on this slide retinitis, retinitis pigmentosa, um, but that is the, 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 the next most common uh, form of sight loss. 
Other causes of sight loss, um, a surprising number of medications commonly taken by older people can have visual side effects. So medications um, for cardiovascular disease, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, antibiotics, anti-Parkinsonian medication, and even eye medications themselves um, can, can cause uh, some difficulties. Some personal experiences, uh, and these are quotes from a seminar that the Dementia and Sight Loss Interest Group ran in London uh, in 2009. So, Graham Doggett has uh, memory problems and a condition called posterior cortical atrophy, which affects his visual perception. And he says, you fall over and do all sorts of funny things. If I go to the loo, there's a good chance I'll go into the women's because of the stylized signs. There are so many mirrors. I think there are lots of people in the room. Agnes Houston was diagnosed with dementia four years ago and developed vision problems that affect her perception. Agnes said, I was having fluctuations with my sight and strange experiences. I began to fall and injure myself and people thought I had a drink problem. Additional stress, of course, is placed on carers by the combination of both conditions. Liz Graham helps to care for her father who already had an inherited eye dis disorder, retinitis pigmentosa, when he developed vascular dementia. And Liz said, my father had a guide dog but was gradually unable to remember commands. He's lost the capacity to visualize the layout of the house in his mind, which means he cannot find his way around the house, even to the toilet. Now, the Thomas Pocklington Trust, one of the members of the interest group, has recently funded several research studies, and I'm just going to talk about one of them here um, by Vanessa Lawrence and colleagues, case studies and interviews of 17 older people with sight loss and dementia, 17 family carers, and 18 care professionals. And these six core themes emerged from the analysis, disorientation, loss of independence, accepting multiple losses, risk of isolation, hallucinations, and challenges to services. So an increased sense of uh, disorientation. The experience of joint sight loss and dementia can create a profound sense of disorientation. Many had difficulty recalling the time and their surroundings and were often unable to locate themselves by using visual clues. This often provoked distress, occasionally leading to agitated behavior. A loss of independence, the combination of being unable to compensate for poor memory with visual cues and being unable to compensate for poor sight by learning new skills, profoundly impaired older adults' abil ability to manage independently. Concerns about safety often prompted family members to place limits on their relatives' activities, which would lead to conflict in their relationship. Care professionals felt obliged to adopt a cautious approach, prioritizing risk reduction rather than promoting independence. And accepting multiple losses. Acceptance was an important coping strategy that influenced people's satisfaction with their life, their willingness to give up particular activities and the ease with which they accepted help. However, dementia and sight loss together became a substantial threat to the person's identity, leading to denial. So accepting this second loss was a major issue for them. The combination of sight loss and dementia restricted participation in hobbies and social groups. Many were able to cope with one-to-one -one interaction only and were dependent on their carers for stimulation. Telephones were regarded as a lifeline and much value was attached to regular contact with paid carers and volunteers. But there were limited resources and opportunities for one-to-one -one contact in care homes. Visual hallucinations were common and increased disorientation and distress. Family members were often uncertain how best to manage them. Many learned eventually to adopt a non-confrontational approach and to provide reassurance. Family carers faced exceptional demands as people with dementia and sight loss were wholly dependent on their relative for orientation and stimulation in their everyday care. 
carers were often physically exhausted but found it difficult to leave the person for even a short period of time. Sight loss professionals felt that restless and disruptive behavior by people with dementia can threaten to monopolize staff time and upset other group members and residents. And those particular professionals also criticized their, the training that they received for failing to equip them with the necessary care skills to cope with both conditions. What should be done to help these challenges? Well, promoting the individual's confidence in their environment is important. Informal and formal carers need to provide clear, regular communication to promote the person's sense of orientation and confidence in their environment. And techniques like reality orientation and validation therapy can help. People with dementia and sight loss would benefit from more one-to-one -one contact with paid carers and volunteers, especially if more time could be devoted to valued pastimes. Managing threats to independence, people should be supported to pursue valued activities in a safe environment. Care professionals are probably best placed to initiate discussions about activities that may no longer possibly considered safe. Providing an acceptable explanation and rationale, for example, if there's a risk of falling, may help people to overcome uh, come to terms with limitations. And family members need guidance on managing hallucinations. And this might include education and reassurance about the approach, education about non-confrontation, full explanation, and guidance on um, distraction techniques. The exceptional demands placed on informal carers may require extra respite resources, such as night carers and more sessions at day centers. Family carers also require ready access to information and advice, such as that provided by the RNIB and the Alzheimer's Society. More services are needed that are capable of meeting both conditions, both needs. Day centers that provide a stable environment, clear verbal instructions from staff and transport to and from the centers, and activities tailored to cognitive abilities and an opportunity to spend time with people with similar problems would benefit people with dementia and sight loss. And of course, training. Training programs for vision rehabilitation workers should include information on working with people with dementia. Joint training of mental health and sight loss professionals would encourage the exchange of knowledge and expertise. And current and past carers, and indeed people with uh, these conditions themselves, could help in educating professionals on how uh, they, they can provide best help and support. The Thomas Pocklington Trust has also done some research into improving models of care for uh, these groups of people. So models of care uh, need to respond to both conditions. And too often, it seems as though they can focus on just one uh, model of care. So for example, the enriched or Kitwood model of dementia care does not take sufficient account of the physical environment to make it sensitive to the particular issues facing people with dementia and sight loss. Sight loss should be addressed in dementia resources and vice versa. A sensory model of care is needed which would integrate the different care models. A network of practice could support staff in different settings and share good practice. And already we have at least 30 individuals from around 10 organizations who've expressed an interest to work together to move, the, uh, move services and support forward. Care home inspections should address how well services meet the needs of people with both conditions. And at the very least, inspections should check whether residents have had a regular eye test. Regular assessment, reassessment and diagnosis is essential follow-on action, and in particular, encouraging spectacle wearing. Turning now to some good practice tips that have emerged from the research. So, improvements in lighting, making uh, lighting much brighter for people with both these conditions. Make better use of color and increase contrast, particularly walls to doors, furniture to walls. 
minimize the amount of clutter, both physical and visual clutter. Look to see whether or not there is glare in the environment and make better use of shade and, and blinds. And support route finding and people's orientation um, with sound, smell, touch and color. I'm thinking about good practice in relation to occupation and activity. Make sure that uh, there are enjoyed activities that are accessible. Using uh, audio transcription and talking books. And, uh, try to engage people in tactile activities. Apply audio labels to sort and locate people's personal effects. Provide one-to-one -one support to explain and describe the environment that people are in at present and make sure that the benefits are assessed as well as the risks of activities. People with dementia need regular eye tests and access to routine interventions in the same way as any other person. However, it's clear that optometrists um, lack experience of dementia and they need better guidance and uh, more education. Paid and family carers may not give priority to eye tests spectacle wearing or other interventions and that is something that needs to be addressed. But eye tests alone are not enough and information about the concurrence of these two conditions um, for paid and family carers is really essential. Domiciliary tests, domiciliary eye tests at home and in care homes should be available for those who cannot uh, visit an optometrist. And it's important that appointments are made for a little longer than usual. And information and training about sight loss and the effect of interventions is essential for carers, both family and paid. Uh, my last slide is really uh, some links and information about the Dementia and Sight Loss Interest Group. You can see our web pages, uh, which are on Vision 2020 UK. And you can log on and register an interest if you have a particular interest there. I've also brought with me some information which I've not been able to display, but please catch me. Uh, I'm around today and tomorrow. The Alzheimer's Society and the Thomas Pocklington Trust have produced some information and fact sheets. And uh, I have these with me, so please come and contact me. And thank you very much for your attention.